Welcome to chapter 7 on list of values, otherwise known as LOVs, and alerts. The objectives of this lecture is on list of values, LOVs, how to create them, how to display them, some of the different properties involved in uh, adjusting those, and alerts, how to create and display alerts. Now, both the LOV and the alert is pretty much um, like a dialogue window that, that you're used to. So an LOV, which means a list of values, is an interface object that allows the user to choose from a value from a single or multi-column selection list. Okay, what that means is, uh, remember we have this issue with like the zip code on a student or an instructor update form, and we only want them to be able to enter, um, you know, zip codes which we have in the list, or we want to handle it in another way to enter zip codes into the system. Ideally, probably, you should make your, your zip code, you know, table complete for the whole country or the whole spectrum of people that you plan to enter into the, zip, the list. But anyway, so this, this would be like a window which would pop up, which would give them a choice of the different um, zip codes, and they would choose the one they want and it will return. Now, an LOV is based on an SQL query. There are two types of built-ins for LOVs, um, and these are different methods that you can programmatically display an LOV. And this would be, for example, if you have a button and you want to, you want that button to call the, the list, um, and then on the when button press trigger, you could make use of one of these, the show, LOV, and the list value. Now, um, Show LOV is generic and list values applies to a particular one. So here's an example of an LOV dialog box. And you can see that uh, we have a title area on the top. So that's going to be one of the properties for an LOV which you can control. And um, the criteria window, what that is is when a user, uh, if there's a long list there, then a user can narrow it down. Say you just want, um, you know, define a particular city, and there's a long list there. And then here we have the columns, city, state, zip code, and, and each of these columns has a width which you can adjust. And then these find, OK, and, and uh, cancel are standard buttons. So you enter the, the, the item, the criteria in the criteria window, and you press the find button, and then it narrows down the list. You also have the ability to open the love empty so that you, if you have a really uh, large list there, and then the user chooses the particular one they want, and then they hit enter, hit find, and get the list. So there are a number of steps involved in creating an LOV. Uh, there is an LOV wizard, and I highly recommend that you make use of that, because it steps you through all the processes, and there are a number of different components. Uh, you'll get a better feel of um, the different components for, the, for an LOV when you watch the demonstration, and then you create one yourself. But uh, I'm just going to give you an overview now. So use the LOV wizard. And basically, uh, the LOV is really just that dialog window. So the LOV has to be associated with a record group. And the record group is the item, or rather the object on the object navigator, which is associated with the SQL query. Um, and you can actually have different LOVs associated with the same record group, or whatever what have you. Uh, as you walk through the wizard, uh, and you'll see this in the demonstration, you can adjust a number of these standard properties. And then there are a number of other properties, if you have, uh, want to customize it further, that you can do in the property palette. And likewise, all of those properties that you were asked, you know, what you wanted the values to be for in the wizard, you can continue to, to change those. You know, uh, Generally, you know, the, the, the LOV is going to pop up, and the default place is going to be in the upper left-hand corner if you, don't, if you don't give a value. So you should think about how your form is working and where you want to pop that, that open, what, you, what items are going to be blocked by that displaying, how is it going to work for you. So as you walk through the, um, as you walk through the, the wizard, um, there'll be a point where you can build your own SQL using the Query Builder. And this is basically a tool which allows you to, um, to go through and 
almost with a GUI interface to create SQL, so you don't have to write the SQL yourself. You can see over there on, on the left, that's kind of like adding to the uh, to the where clause where the state is only in New York or Connecticut. And then you can see how there are blocks that are little boxes that are checked next to the database uh, table item list. And uh, in the demonstration, we'll go over a number of those different buttons on the top and give you a, a closer um, run through of how to make use of this. The query Builder is good. It's good to know how to use. This is this query builder is also used exactly the same in Oracle reports. So here's um, an example of how to programmatically call love. So this is kind of a, an unusual logic, which you're probably not used to. The um, the show love actually is a boolean, so it returns true or false. So that's why we have this um, like X is assigned to then this built-in show love and the love name. So what that does is, if that love exists, it returns true. It basically just opens up the love with that particular name. And that's something you, you could put on a when button press trigger. And um, list values, on the other hand, it opens the love for the current item. And so, uh, Usually, if I have a button which goes with list values, then I may want to put the properties for mouse navigate to no and I am keyboard navigate to no. What this will do is if users in a particular field, say the zip code field, and they press the list values, it'll open the zip code LOV because it hasn't left the zip code item and the list values is only associated with a particular item. If you have a number of loves, in your program, and you, know, you, you have to take these kind of things into consideration. Okay, now we're going to go through an alert. Now, basically, an alert is a small dialog window with a with um, one to three buttons that they can press. And this is a sample alert, and this is coming from one of your forms that you've seen already in the labs. And here you have a choice to say okay or cancel. You can see the way. There's a dog line around OK, so that's like the default first choice. Um, so basically, think of this. The, the alert is a dialog window, which you're going to get. You want it to pop up at a certain point. But then how you want to handle what the user chooses, that's something else. That's not actually related to the alert. That's related to the trigger that you use to call the alert. So first, you create the alert in the alert node in the object navigator. And then you have to give the alert a few uh, properties, the title and the message, and then um, choose the style. What I mean by the style is an alert has three different icons, which you can choose from. And this is the property on the alert called the alert style. And this is basically the icon. So the caution icon is kind of like that traffic sign, sort of. And note is kind of like just an informative one, and stop is you know a little stronger statement. You you really don't have a choice of any other icon, so you have to choose from one of those three. And uh, so after you choose the alert style, then you have to give the buttons labels, and you have up to three buttons. And so that you know here it's like okay or cancel, but it could be whatever you want. And then the default button is like when we first saw that alert a few minutes ago. It's the one that has the uh, uh, if a user just hit enter after seeing the alert, that's the one that would be chosen. And then somewhere in the form, you need to have trigger code, which calls the alert. And this is where it gets a little more complicated. Because you're going to make use of the built-in, the show alert built-in. And that show alert built-in has to be associated with one particular you know, alert name. I mean, this could be more complex. It could be a variable, and, and you could handle it with PL SQL, but uh, just on a vanilla. Uh, scenario here. So we have show alert and alert name. And this would call the alert. And what it does is you have a couple different buttons, OK? So it calls the alert, and it returns an alert button number, where that number is the number of the button that the user chooses. So you have to have a variable, which is an alert button um, type. And that variable is, you know, well, we're going we're gonna to see the code right now. And that'll show you a bit more. So 
we have, um, this is uh, just some sample code that would be in a trigger that would be calling the, uh, the alert. I, this could be like, you know, let's say the user enters, um, you know, a zip code which is not in the database. You want to handle that and when validate item trigger, but you want to give, um, you know, more descriptive meaning so you can actually change the property of the alerts message programmatically based on uh, whatever, you know, occurred. And then um, in the trigger of the when validate item, you could have the call to the to the alert. You maybe do this because you don't the message which you normally get is kind of on the bottom of the form, maybe hard to read. So what we have in here is the only uh, variable that that I we've declared is the button chosen, and that's a number, and that is relating to the number that's returned from the alert. So button chosen is set to be. Now I'm using the built-in show alert and alert four, and that's returning the number to button chosen. And then, um, then I have, you know, depending on what the button chosen value is, if it's alert button two, then I want you to do this, enter the query. Otherwise, if it's button three, then exit the form. Oh, it doesn't really make sense, but uh, I didn't want to write uh, more complicated code. I just want you to see how you would implement an action occurring based on, you know, the different buttons. Or, you know, if nothing else happens, then just do nothing. You will uh, create an alert in your exercise, and you'll get a, a larger sense of what that means. So there are a few properties on the alert that are important to be aware of, and it's also um, good to realize that the properties of alert can be changed programmatically at runtime. Uh, and the reason you may do this is if you have, uh, you know, a lot of different types of messages and different uh, possible texts that you have in the message and ways that you want to handle it, then you can handle it all in, in your PLSQL. And you can, um, these different items can actually be variables, like in the set alert property, the alert's name is exit alert. Um, the alert button one label, I'm changing that to yes. Uh, this is just an example. So when you finish with this uh, exercise, we're going to go back and take the, uh, the sample from the first chapter, EXO 102, and we're going to put a love on that. And then we're going to go to EX 0702, and we're going to put an alert on that. And as before, you'll continue with your homework assignment and you'll be ready for chapter eight.